Hi, my name is Christian Shire, and I'm the founder and CEO of Soundflow. In this little video, I'll try to demonstrate to you how to get started with installing Soundflow on a new computer. So the first thing you need to do is to go to the Soundflow website at soundflow.org. Then you can hit the download button up here. So since this is the first time I do this, I need to create a new user. Uh, so even though the buttons say sign in, uh, these can be used to create a new user as well. So I'll choose the red button to sign in with an email password combination. For the email, I'm just going to create a new email here. Click next and assign it a name and a password. Hit save. This takes me to the installation page where I can see the latest installer, hit the download button, and I can also read the instructions on how to go through the installation process. But I'll be covering this in this video. So you uh, hit the download button here, and you wait for the package to download. Now you can just click that package, continue and install as you usually do. Now, since this is the first time we install Soundflow on this computer, it will be presented with this screen. This tells you to uh, open system preferences and grant access to Soundflow in the security and privacy area. This is something we need so we can control the computer for you. So you click this button, choose open system preferences, and here you can see Soundflow is not checked in the accessibility page. So you click the lock, enter your password, check the box, and now you can close this window again. So I go back to the screen and I choose click here when you're done. So now you need to sign into the Soundflow app with the credentials that we created just before. So you choose sign in with email here. I enter the email just as before and my password. And Soundflow is now preparing the session. Since this is the first time we open Soundflow on this computer, it will automatically open the Soundflow editor window here. Even if we close that, you can get to the Soundflow window by clicking the icon here and choose Open Soundflow. This is also where you control uh, which user you're signed in as, whether Soundflow should start automatically, if you want to bypass all the shortcuts, um, and you can, uh, for example, restart Soundflow behind the scenes, or you can open the log file to see what's going on under the hood. But let's choose Open Soundflow. The default shortcut to opening Soundflow is actually Control F1. All right, so now we're at the start page. And so here on the start page, you can see six buttons that all take us to various important areas of the application. So to begin, let's just walk through the, the main pages here of Soundflow. The edits page is where you'll spend most of your work. So here you can see all the folders or uh, packages of various commands that control Pro Tools, Cubase. Um, there's a lot for Pro Tools at the moment. Um, and so in this pane here, you can see the various commands under that folder. You can also see the triggers that we assigned. Those with the little blue one means that there are default Soundflow triggers. So your profile comes with uh, a lot of shortcuts that we designed for you. I'll show you how you can, uh, either you can disable them individually like this, or you can create a new profile where uh, they're not there to begin with, so you can assign all your own shortcuts. But actually, uh, you can see a lot of them look uh, dimmed. That's because they're grayed out because we haven't started a trial yet. So you can go to the My Account page here, and then you should start a trial of a Soundflow Cloud Pro or Soundflow Cloud Indie. Um, let's start a trial of the Soundflow Cloud Pro so that you'll have access to all the, the features. Right, so I start here, enter my address, and potentially a VAT registration number. I hit Next. And that's it, I can start my trial, even without putting in a credit card. And so we wait for a while while Soundflow makes the, gets the subscription ready. That's it. Now we can go back to the editor, and you can see all the commands are now available. 
All right, so let's talk about how to control if you want to start with all these default shortcuts or if you want to start with an empty profile. So the way that you edit profiles is via the profile menu here. You can see now I'm on an untitled user profile. Let's try to edit that. So first I can give it a name. Since my name is Christian, I'm just going to call it Christian's default profile. Then I hit next. All right, so in this step, I can choose which packages I want to be accessible. Right now, we're, we're letting it show all of the various packages over here. I could also choose this option and then simply click on those that I want to be available in this profile. For example, if you're not using Cubase and not using the audio engine, you could choose not to use those and just uh, show you the rest. For now, I'm just going to stick with show all commands so that we can get an um, a nice detailed overview of all the different commands that there are. So we choose next and this is the important step in choose triggers. So right now this profile is based on the default short sound flow triggers which means that they're all laid out for you. Many people like this because they don't have to come up with all the shortcuts themselves but this can interfere with shortcuts that Pro Tools has already defined. So you can also choose to create an, a profile that is empty based, which means that it just starts with no shortcuts at all. So let's do that for now. And in the last step, you can see install third party packages. You need to go to the store section. So we'll get to that in a second. I choose save. And now you can see all the triggers disappeared on this profile because now this profile is based on an empty profile. If we want it, we could create a new profile where we say this is the Soundflow default triggers. We choose show all commands. And in this one, we're going to let this profile be based on the default Soundflow triggers. I hit save. And now you can see this profile has all the default ones. And I can quickly change between the two profiles. For example, if I want to get inspiration of how Soundflow set up all these shortcuts and you want to copy those to your own settings step by step. So those are two very distinct ways of working. Let's just use the, the profile with the default triggers here. And so let's say that you didn't like a particular shortcut that was assigned um, and you want to substitute it for your own. So the default shortcuts here, you can't delete them, but you can disable them. So I can click here to disable one. Then if I want to add my own triggers to this, I click new trigger. Then I can choose, for example, a keyboard trigger. Now I have to choose um, which apps do I want this keyboard shortcut to work in. You can choose just for it to work in all apps, or you can select apps that it's supposed to work in. For example, this should only work in Pro Tools when Pro Tools is active. Then you hit record to record a keyboard combination, for example, F10, and then you're done. So now I successfully um, changed the, the trigger for automation read for the selected tracks to F10 from shift option F9. All right, to test certain commands, you can also run, run the command directly from here. And you can uh, view the source of the command in case that you want to use it for scripts that you make yourself. But we'll get to that. So if you look at this section over here, you can see that there's one folder called all commands. And in, in this section, you'll see all the available commands at once. You can also use the search feature, for example, to find preview related commands. They'll all show up here. You can use escape to clear the search again. If you go to the custom command section, you'll see there's a default package. This is where so all commands need to be in packages. So if you want to make a new macro, for example, you first select the package that you want it to be in and your own macros can only be in your custom commands section here in a package. So first you select which package you want it to be in then you click new macro, give it a name and now you can add actions to this macro and you can add triggers to start this macro right here. Um, so right now let's just uh, create a macro that launches actually that activates an app and we can choose for example Google Chrome so if I run this macro Google Chrome is going to be activated and if I want to assign a trigger to this 
once again, it works like this, assign a keyboard trigger, and let's say I want control C to always trigger Chrome. Now I've gotten that. And it's easy to delete the trigger again. Right, now let's say that we want to create a new package here. You can do that from the menu here, new custom command package. You can name it um, Christians Pro Tools Commands. Christians Pro Tools Macros. Now I have a new folder, you might say, or new package that I can use to create macros and group them. Via this menu, you can also create custom scripts, decks, and surfaces, but more on that in, in another video. All right, so let's take a look at how to install packages made by other users. You do that by going to the store here. And so you can see here in the store, we have a lot of different pre-built packages for all sorts of stuff. So if we look it up here, we have the dialog editing isotope package, which is very popular for people who work with dialog editing. So actually, let's take a look at this right now. You can either click the package and you can read more about it. You can see an intro video and some explanations of what it does. You can then choose to install it here, or you can just click install right here on the package. So that's it. It just takes a couple of seconds to install it, and then you can click go to package. Right, and now you see in the left section here that under installed packages, the dialog editing isotope package comes up. So if you want to watch the documentation for it and you've clicked somewhere else, you just need to click back on the package and it will show you here. There's also a package forum. And as you can see, you're automatically created as a new user. And in this package forum, you can ask questions if there's anything from that particular package that's not working. All right. So now you can see this package comes with a bunch of different scripts and macros that helps you do certain stuff in Isotope. It also comes with a pre-designed deck that works together with the Stream Deck hardware unit. So that's it. This is how easy it is to install new functionality. Let's say I want to, let's say I want to create a shortcut for the send to Isotope. You go in here, you can read about the command and assign a new trigger for it. For example, control I. And then you can say that this shortcut should only work in Pro Tools. Now you can see this actually poses a conflict because there's already an, a different command assigned to control I. And then you can choose to remove that trigger. And now this, this one is the one that's working. All right, so much for the editor page. Let's go to the keyboard map. So this is a great way to get an overview of the shortcuts that are designed in your SoundFlow profile. You can hit these buttons to get to the various layers to see what's occupied and what is not. And for example, the one that we just assigned, Control-I, is here. You can click it and get redirected back to that command. So this is a really great way to understand what's going on and if something's not working the way you thought it should be um, you can always go in here uh, you can even hold down your modifier keys for example now I'm holding down control shift to get an overview of what's working there all right so because we know that it's quite complicated to work with SoundFlow we built the forum directly inside the app and this is a great resource so if you have any questions something's not working or you want to know how to do something click the how to section here you can do a search for whatever it is you're you need help with or you can simply ask a new question and as you can see it's really easy to just pose a new question here and then it'll actually show you some suggestions because maybe somebody else already answered this question before you all right and finally there's a help section here where you can get access to uh, some getting started documentation, some basics of SoundFlow, and also the complete reference of the commands. And finally, as we already saw, you have the My Account page up here. All right, I hope this is enough to get you started using SoundFlow. Again, as I said, uh, please don't hesitate to use the forum. 
if, if you have any question, um, all questions are appreciated. Um, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, if you feel like something's not working or, or it doesn't make sense, it's probably because we designed it wrong. So we always like to get feedback on the forum for those things. All right. I hope you'll really enjoy using Soundflow.